Hello, everyone, and welcome to Rob Has a Podcast. We are here live after the finale of Big Brother Canada 6. I'm your host, Taryn Armstrong, and with me today is uh, some sort of mystery guest. I don't know who I'm talking to here. Uh, is, is this you, Melissa? Yes, Taryn. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to podcast. Congratulations, Brent, (laughs) on another win. This will be your second. Um, So, great. I'm very happy for you all. I'm glad everyone's very excited to be here. (laughs) Well, I'm glad you're feeling okay, Melissa. Also Mm -hmm. with us tonight is Brent Walgamont. How you doing, Brent? I'm doing great. Uh, I'm not going to belabor this point because this is not about me. It's honestly about Paris and Kayla. But uh, not only did I win the draft by picking Paris first, I had the first pick. That's twice in a row. Didn't I pick Josh first in the in the, in, in the did, original? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, if I go with my gut, honey, I got it. Uh, I picked Paris first this year, and I nailed it. And not only that, uh, Melissa picked Kayla second, and she was uh, final two. So that was awesome. And I also won the stock watch by pushing all of my chips into the middle on Paris. I am so excited about it, but I will say that I, I, it's a little bittersweet. I am very, very happy for myself and I'm very happy for Paris, but I think there was a better player here. We can talk about it. Yes. Uh, Brent is a double winner here. Um, and, uh, that's, uh, that's how things go. Melissa, uh, unfortunately wearing the veil. Um, we have the chat room open on Rob is a website.com and, uh, feel free to join us there. There's, a, there's lots, lots of people here. Lots of people having fun. Um, you can send questions into me on Twitter at Armstrong Taren if you want to. Um, and I'll do my best to, uh, to, to read through the questions as we go. Um, I had to stay off of Twitter during the episode so I wouldn't be spoiled. So uh, we'll see how the questions go when we get to them. But uh, headline tonight, Paris is our Big Brother Canada 6 winner. She wins by a vote of 6 to 1. We had all forecast that this would be a 4 to 3 vote, maybe 5 to 2 at best. Um, but when it comes down to it, Paris gets all six of the votes that are not Derek. Um, and uh, I don't I I was I was fairly surprised that she got all six. I I did not expect that, Brent. I think it was a cascade, and I think Johnny had a lot to do with it from what I could tell, and and maybe this is just my read. I could be totally wrong. It might have been Allie and Liv who convinced Johnny. I don't know, but uh, Johnny seemed to be his anti-Dela ire seemed to be uh, it seemed to be raising during the episode, and when he asked that question about rake her over the coals, tell me why she doesn't deserve it, he was just really living for that to the point where I was like, well, where is this going? I thought he just wanted to, you know, you, people ask that all the time when they're planning on voting for somebody else. They're like, you know, tell me why this person shouldn't win. But it had a lot more fire in it. And you could see as the questioning went on that I felt like Paris felt like she was maybe going to win. And Kayla definitely knew that she was in trouble and had to do something quickly. Yeah. yeah. And that was all thanks to Maddie and Will doing their like, yeah, come on, oh yeah. Anytime she answered a question, it was like she said one word that didn't even mean anything. And they'd be like, oh yeah, girl, you've got this, yeah. And like the audience would start screaming and it was just like, it was totally unfair. I hate that, it was awful because it wasn't like Paris was saying stuff that was so much better than Kayla. I thought they were both giving great answers, but the way that people were reacting and the way that Maddie was acting as if everyone was cheering for this one, it was like, uh okay are you serious it it was it really influenced everybody i feel it influenced everybody because it started to influence me because i was like oh yeah that was a good answer okay cool and it's like wait what kayla gave just as good of an answer i mean granted kayla's questioning and her speech weren't i feel like weren't as strong as paris because Kayla called them babies and she knew that they were emotional. And instead of appealing to those emotions, she called them emotional. And it's like, okay, wait, whoa, 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 don't call them that. And don't say I was able to use you all. Like Paris basically, Paris basically said similar things about how she had to play on their emotions, but she was like, I had to do it. And I'm really sorry about it. Da da da. But I had to play for game, whatever. And so like, I, I understand where they're coming from, but I just hated the way that Maddie was trying to influence right. the jury. 
It was, it, but isn't that just like the story of Maddie? Though I feel like ever since she was going to be evicted, it's always been about she's declared herself the winner. So she was the winner when she was evicted, right? And now, which that she's on the jury, she gets to decide what is valid and what's not. So every time Paris says something, it's like, yes, yes, of course you love us. And she, I'm, I'm sure there's a part of herself that's like, you know what? I was part of that trio. If Paris wins, that means that I win. So I can mm -hmm. declare myself the winner again. I agree with you that Kayla, uh, look, I feel like her bitch came out a little bit at times. And it, look, here's the yeah, thing. It's an, edited, it's an edited show. So I don't know if the jury got a little ornery with her and then she got a little bitchy with them or if she was a little bitchy to begin with. But what I can say is that in the house, Kayla more than, than Paris definitely let him have it. And uh, I feel like at the end of the day, this is a social game. Rob always talks about it. It's a social game. People are going to vote for the people that they like. And while I do feel like I wanted the jury to reward Slayla, I wanted that goddess moment, you know, yes, you killed everybody, but I, I don't feel like that they, they, they didn't feel that way. They wanted to reward the person who felt like the underdog to them because they saw Kayla, not as Kayla and Derek, they saw her and Derek as Dela, as one big entity, mm -hmm. and they wanted to get one over on them at the end. They were not going to reward a showman at the end of their season. Yeah, I mean, and honestly, like, I think that Paris did a great job in the final questioning. I feel like she was able to totally explain her game where I was really nervous that she wasn't going to be able to do that. And I really think that the her visit with the winners helped her a lot. I think that they were able to explain to her, like, use your show, say, like, use your superior social game, use this and that, say that you're a, a law student, you know, like, and I think that maybe she might not have said that stuff previously because in her previous preparations for her speech, she was going to talk about, you know, how she made this move and that move, which really those moves weren't her, it was other people. So it was really good the way that she was able to use what the winners told her in the visit and take it and turn it into a great final questioning and final right. speech. And I think that really helped influence uh, Johnny and uh, Ali and Liv. I also want to say really quickly that this jury, more than anything, I felt like was a little bit unfair to Kayla. And I know that she didn't have the best social game, but what I saw in the jury clips and what I saw in some of the questioning tonight struck me as a little bit sexist. And here's why. Because when they were talking about uh, Kayla in reference to Derek, they were always talking about the fact that, well, there's nothing really there. He's playing her. She's the lovesick puppy dog who's way into him more than he's into her. As if it's not possible for her to be playing him. She was trying to mm -hmm. tell them during that entire questioning, look, I was going to cut him the entire time. I was going to I was going to make the move at the end that you all wanted me to make. And she, she I just feel like that they wouldn't give her any credit for that. It was uh it was it it was it made me puke a little bit when I heard Maddie and Ryan talking about the fact that, you know, oh, Kayla uh she's way into Derek more than Derek's into her and of course he must be playing her because it gives her no credit for the game that she's chosen to play. This is a, this was a mighty game that Kayla played and I really feel like that uh, they didn't give her credit for it. Also the fact that they continually harped on the fact that she wouldn't evict Derek at final five and at final four and Melissa as we talked about previously in a chat that was so incredible to me. I don't know understand why Maddie and Will keep harping on the fact that she wouldn't evict Derek like well why wouldn't you evict Derek? Why wouldn't you take me to the final two like Will talks like Bitch, because that would have put her in a must-win situation, at least the situation she was in now. She had the opportunity to be taken to the final by Derek. She had the opportunity to be taken to the final by Paris. If she would have taken Will to the final three instead of Derek, she would have been placed in a must-win must situation, and she wouldn't have been guaranteed anything and wouldn't have had even had a shot to campaign for the victory. So I don't know what those two were talking about. Maddie and Will and Ryan, they can just go away. The rest of them I like. I mean, personally, uh, I'm now podcasting with two people who have both worn veils on finale. Uh, Brent, we know we know what happened last finale. Uh, I think I'm podcasting with a bunch of babies. Uh, yeah, that's how yeah, I yeah. Um, and so <laughs> that's. I'm sure that makes you feel really good about yourself, right, Melissa? Yeah, makes me feel great. No, I agree. I think that Kayla shouldn't have. She shouldn't have said that. She should definitely not have called them out right before they were voting saying that they were babies. Like even if she thought that it was gonna be like a cute, funny thing to say, I don't know what she was thinking. 
Not a good idea. Definitely not a good idea. I think her final performance in jury questioning, I do think she did a good job with Ryan's jury questioning uh, because we were like, what is the only possible way that could convince Ryan to vote for Kayla? I mean, it didn't work, but she she played the best way she could into Ryan's ego in that situation. Uh, uh, but, but generally, I think that Paris did do a really good job in the jury questioning, whereas Kayla... Not so much, but I do think that they have been, these jury questionings were way better than the past few seasons of Big Brother US. Like above and beyond, both of them did better than Big Brother US. Um, but, you know, I, I really I, just don't want to have a conversation about jury management ever again. And I feel like we keep having to have this exact same conversation and I'm so sick of it. Right. The one, the best thing that Kayla said, Der uh, Derek, uh, <laughs> Taryn was when she said, you know what? Vote for the person who's played the entire game. Don't for vote for the person that just played for a week. I felt like that was the best thing she said. She really was trying to minimize Paris's game as much as possible, basically saying she floated through the entire game. She just won an HOH at the very tail end. And I give, let me just say, I saw something in the chat say that Brynn isn't giving Paris credit. Uh, bitch, I give Paris all the credit in the world. I didn't think she could win, and she did. I was rooting for her from the beginning, and she won. So I give her all the credit in the world. Having said that, I do think there was an avenue for Kayla to attack Paris's game and the jury didn't really seem to acknowledge that. I mean, it, to me it was true that Kayla played a entire game and I know you can say well Paris played an entire game too. I do feel like there were times where Paris took her foot off the gas. I do feel like there were times where Paris really didn't have to play that hard. She even said, you know, I'm on, I do not I don't need to win this HOH because I know I'm safe all around. I can just sleep this entire week. And that's a great way to play Big Brother, but I feel like that Kayla was more out there and thus mm -hmm. getting to the end, I felt like that should have been rewarded more. Yeah. So I think I think the very clear question that I have is, do we think these votes were locked in before the questioning? Uh, had Johnny, Ali and Liv turned against voting for Kayla before they asked they asked those questions? Or did Paris's impressive performance in the questioning sway them because they were open to voting for Paris? Uh, I don't know the answer to this question. I am desperate to know it. I hope that somebody asks them soon. Um, I hope maybe that we can ask them soon. Uh, but right. what do you think, Melissa? I mean, I would hope that it was the questions and the speeches, uh, because otherwise it means that Maddie and Will got into the jury and changed everything. And that concerns me. Uh, I, I don't I, think it was that. I, I, I don't think it was that, with all respect. I, and I do think it was locked in also. I agree with Melissa. Uh, I, would, I, I do think it was locked in. But what I think happened is that, uh, you know, and Johnny talked about this a little bit in his ET Canada interview where he was like, you know, there's a part of me that's still playing the game. And if I can get one on over Dela, again, he's not treating them as two different people. It's the same mistake. Uh, I think it was Derek who made them. Was it Derek? who, Or maybe it was Will it was who Will. made a mistake in the competition where he treated them like one person. So again, like the jury's thinking of Dela as one big monstrous entity. And like, if we can beat that entity, then we can collectively win the game. We'll feel better about ourselves if we beat the big showmans, the big bad of the season. And you heard Johnny sprinkle it throughout some of the things he said. He called Kayla a villainess. Now he said it with some fire and some uh, sass in his voice. So I thought he was loving that. And if she got to the end with Derek, Maybe he would vote for her. In fact, I'm sure he would have voted for her. But at the end with Paris, I think Paris just looked like too big of an underdog. And people love underdogs, as we saw last season with Josh. I mean, it's so appealing to vote for somebody who you feel like you can change their life, that they never had a shot at winning. And you have the power to crown them and say, you know what? I'm going to give it to you, not to the person who thinks that they've already won. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's it's crazy. I, I thinking about it. I do think that I think that ultimately what happened is all three of Ali, Liv, and Johnny. They all said that they were way more likely to vote for Kayla over Paris. Um, we even saw in the jury videos, um, Ali in particular was just trashing Paris, not wanting her to win the game, saying that she sucked. Uh, and like that led me to believe that the, she was not particularly likely to vote for Paris. However, in the ET Canada jury videos that were released uh, last night, um, we saw uh, Ali talk more about like, you know what, now I've had some time to cool down. I'm a little more open. Um, 
I think, in my opinion, I think that they came into the jury questioning open to voting for Paris. And I think that they were swayed by Paris's speech. I personally was swayed by Paris's speech. I was streaming my reaction live on Twitch as I was watching, and I had a visceral reaction to Paris screaming in her answers about how great she played this game and how much she deserved it and all of the things that she had done. It was the yeah. complete opposite of what she said to the uh, the roundtable of winners, uh, which I thought was terrible. I thought she did a fantastic job. And I said to myself, if I was sitting there in the jury, um, and I was listening to these two people, I would feel inclined to vote for Paris just based on how convincing she is to me right now. I really did feel like she was a lot more impressive than Kayla. I think that Kayla kind of came back when it came to the final plea. I feel like Kayla, uh, you know, she caught up a little bit, but ultimately I think Paris was just so good in those those, those questions. And I saw uh, Liv and Allie uh, and Johnny nodding a lot along to what Paris was saying and being pretty stone-faced to what Kayla was saying. They were not nearly as receptive, and maybe that means they were not as receptive going into the questioning, right. um, but it just felt like they didn't like what she was saying. And it also felt like, uh, and, and I was saying this as well, that like Paris was connecting with them emotionally. Like there was a connection. Yes. You could feel her passion. When I heard Kayla speak, there was a smirk on her face. And, you know, it, it seemed like she was kind of nervous and she just didn't seem to connect with them as well as Paris. And I think that Kayla did an amazing job. I loved what Kayla was saying. I loved what she did in the final plea. Uh, I thought this was one of the best jury questioning segments, uh, certainly on Big Brother Canada that we've, we've ever seen. But oh, I just yeah. felt like Paris did it better and she had an emotional connection to them that Kayla just didn't. And it, I think that does go back to what the winners told Kayla and I think the winners felt the same way which is that like when Kayla was talking to the winners they were impressed by her vigor but they didn't feel connected to her when Paris talked to them and even when Derek talked to them they were there was ba there was banter back and forth there was a connection that they made uh but there wasn't one with Kayla and they were like you need to be a little more empathetic you need to be able to uh connect with people on a more emotional level and I just feel like she wasn't able to crack that code yeah. And I mean, it's possible that, I mean, like I felt the same way with the, uh, the winners questioning. Um, I mean, it's possible it's the way they edited it, but the way they edited it made it seem like they were giving Kayla advice and she was going like, yeah, but this is the way I'm doing it. Or like, yeah, but this is what I already have planned. And it was like, Paris was really listening and really taking in what they were telling her. And I really think that that help Paris a lot um, in the, these final jury questioning, because I don't feel like Kayla took their advice. And I don't, cause they were telling her, you know, connect with them emotionally. You ha you're, you're logical. We get it, but the jury you're telling us the jury's emotional and they suck. Right. And it's like, well, no, you're supposed to not say that you can think it, but you have to like, be like, I get it. And this is why. And da da da. Um, and so, you know, I really think Paris took it into account and I thought that you're right. I think her jury questioning was so good. Um, but I, I, I don't like how everybody was screaming. I don't I know where it. that came from. <laughs> no, but like starting at like at the beginning, I could barely understand. It, it was like like a high schooler in debate or something where they're like talking as fast as they can. You like don't really need to hear what they're saying, but they're just talk, 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 talk to get as many points in as possible. And they're screaming. And I was like, oh, my God, what's going on here? I, it was I felt the first time I've seen the screaming. I felt like that was Kevin Martin's influence. Um, like the the speech he gave was so passionate last season. And yeah. you know, Kayla's a big Kevin Martin fan. Paris is a big Kevin Martin fan. I feel like they both tried to emulate his passion. And uh, and I loved that. I thought it came off great. Uh, Brent, well, how did you feel about it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel I feel great about both of them. Actually, I thought they both did a great job. They both were fighting for it. And I love also the fact that when uh, Kayla sensed that it was slipping away, that she was like, "No." I want it back and I'm going to get it back. And here's why. And she tried to poke holes in, in Paris's game. I agree with you though, uh, Taryn, that it, it ultimately comes down to empathy and being able to make an emotional connection. Uh, you know, maybe a variation of the social game where Paris is able to just connect these, to these people on a level that Kayla is just not capable of. I honestly don't believe this. Uh, I mean, I, I honestly don't believe that Kayla is capable of making the connections uh, with the jury that Paris made. I just don't think she is. I think that she has a bit of a wall up. I think that, and this is no slam on her. I do think that at times she can be a little colder, a little bit more calculating. I think Paris, because of her youth and relative uh, inexperience, can come off a little bit more naive. naive and because of that, 
it lends itself to a, well, you know, we understand you then, or we get you then. Whereas with Kayla, I just don't feel like anybody really, nobody ever got Kayla. Yeah. I don't believe. Maybe Derek did. That's why he voted for her. Ugh. Yeah. I mean, I have a question. Do you think that if Paris loses both rounds of the HOH, but still ends up in the finale, do you think she still wins? Or do you think that really had an impact on the jury that like she was able to say, I won it when I needed to? I think Paris still wins. I think Paris wins no matter who she's sitting next to um, and no matter how, who, how she gets there. Um, and uh, one of the reasons why I think that is that um, like thinking about it some more, thinking about like how much did the questioning influence Johnny, Liv and Allie. I think the fact that they all voted the same way tells me yes. that they were probably leaning that way in the first place. Also, especially Johnny's speech when he put the key into the box, uh, that was prepared. Right. That doesn't work if he changes his mind at the last second. Um, so but I, I thought that that isn't Kayla the snake. Yeah. And yeah. That's that. what confused me. I thought Kayla had won the game because of that me speech. Too. Me too, because Caparis is for sure the rat and yeah. Kayla's for sure the snake. I mean, I know you want to probably just wanted to say that speech anyway, but it's like. Yeah, uh, let me let me wait wait, wait wait let let me have let, let me let him have it because that speech made no sense. Honestly, it was it's tired. It didn't even apply here. He just wanted a moment, but it it did not work because Kayla and the analogy is the snake. She's the the one that's uh, got the fangs out. She's the one who's mm -hmm. a little bit more, you know, uh, conniving. Uh, Paris is the rat who's kind of floating around the game. You know, the rat floater kind of thing. I mean, the speech made no sense. I don't understand what he was trying to do there. Uh, I, he must be on the painkillers because he broke his leg. <laughs> I legitimately thought that the speech was going to be a subversion of the original. And he was going to say, uh, let it be how nature, uh, you know, whatever. No, he just repeated it. it. And, and, and the, the rat eats the snake and like surprise everyone. And, and that means he's yeah. voting for Paris. I thought, cause I thought he was voting for Paris in that moment. Mm -hmm. uh, but then he said, he just said the snake eats the rat. And I was like, oh, I, he's, he just he voted it up. Uh, he screwed up. Maybe we can ask him. He, he he obviously meant to go the other way and say for the rat to eat the snake, and he's like, but in his mind he flipped it, and he's like, oh well, I'll just say that, and it'll it'll be fabulous. He you know, pulled whatever. he pulled a topaz in his speech. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was by the way when when Arissa gave that speech, and this is back when I thought it was going to be four to three. Um, I I saw that the only person who wasn't paying attention to her was the only person who was not a fan of the show, which was Derek. Derek was like daydreaming off in the distance when Arissa was giving that speech about make sure you vote for the person that you want to win. Never get it told. <laughs> and he's over here looking off in the distance. I'm like, you know, I have visions of him putting the wrong key in the box. But uh, I don't know. I never saw a six to one vote coming, Taryn. I really didn't. I thought for sure that uh, it was going to be four to three, one way or the other. When uh, I even tweeted when... Uh, Paris won the part three of the HOH. I said, "Crown Kayla." There, she just she just yeah. won the game. That was what she needed to have happen, and she didn't even know it. But uh, I, I obviously we want to ask Kayla about uh, you know were you really going to cut Derek because there there are parts of me that think maybe she wasn't really going to do that. And obviously now she realizes that she probably needed to take him to the end. Obviously she can get. Uh, those three votes. She's going to get Johnny, Olivia, and Allie if she takes Derek to the end. And I think she gets Paris's vote as a fourth if she takes uh, Derek to the end. I think she probably wins the game that way. Yeah, very, very possible. I, yeah, I will say when Paris won the won the HOH, I was like, I think Kayla has this. Um, yep. And then when I w listened to the questioning, I was like, I think Paris has this. And then when I listened to the things that they said as they put the key in the box, I was like, I think Kayla has this because yeah. Yeah. Johnny speech and because also Olivia said, um, mm -hmm. let me let me go up to like you Olivia. You couldn't detect me or something. Olivia or said, my me. vote goes to the person, that, or no, sorry, that was Ali's. Uh, my, I vote, I'm voting for the person that managed to evade my sharp intuition. And we just went over Par Paris's game uh, yesterday where we talked about how Paris and uh, uh, Olivia and Ali had been on to Paris's game all season long. So I thought, it, well, meanwhile, mm -hmm. they trusted Kayla for way too long and Kayla ended up, you know, essentially stabbing them in the back. So I was like, surely this means that she's voting for Kayla because Kayla escaped her intuition, whereas she was able to catch on to what Paris was doing. And when Ali said, I played for, I'm voting for the person that played a nearly flawless game, I was like, well, Paris has been very messy. So has Kayla, yeah, like, but Paris Kayla. has been like the messiest game uh, we've seen in a while. I I thought for sure they were all voting for uh, for Kayla in that moment. The only thing I can think of is either 
they prepared those beforehand. They already knew who they were going to vote for Paris and they thought those speeches made sense. Or they prepared those speeches, vote in in the idea that they were going to vote for Kayla and then decided to just still use them because they couldn't think of anything in time. Like that's all I could think of. It's possible. It's possible. Uh, so, uh, I mean, th- those those stupid, I always read way too much into those stupid things. I'm always wrong about it. Uh, yeah, they, nev- yeah, apparently they I, don't I, mean yeah. anything. They just vote for their friends. Honestly, I go back to the fact that uh, Kayla in her HOH when uh, during the uh, double eviction or the, uh, the night that Canada save happened. Sorry. When Ali and Libya had done all that work to get Eric up on the block and then immediately regretted it and they really didn't want Eric up on the block, they should have obviously gone after the trio because if you keep Eric in the game, obviously that's another target in front of you. And obviously the trio was the result of Ali leaving. Not only that, by leaving an entire trio in the game at the final nine, that means if one of them gets to the end, they already have two votes because people are going to vote for their friends at the end. So I think that was such a terrible mistake for them to, uh, for, for uh, Ali and Olivia to go after Erica there. I know they tried to undo it, but man, that could have really changed things too. Like you have this entire trio over here. You might want to think about getting one of them out before jury so that they don't all have the chance to vote for each other. Yeah. Uh, Something that I thought was, um, because I thought that Kayla probably had this win in the bag, I thought it was a mistake for Paris to bring Kayla to the final two. I felt like Paris had a better chance against Mm -hmm. Derek um, because I figured the the votes that Paris needs are Johnny, Liv, and Erica, or Johnny, Liv, and uh, Olivia, uh, and Allie. Sorry, man. (laughs) Names all over the place. Uh, And uh, Johnny had just finished saying, we see men beat women in the final two all the time. I hate seeing that. Johnny has expressed a lot. He, he even expressed it in the house um, that he didn't want to see Derek win the game because of his gender and his race uh, and that like I think that Johnny was much more likely to vote for Kayla than he was to vote for Derek so I figured that Paris had a much better chance against Derek and at the time I was thinking this may be the losing move for Paris to take Kayla instead of Derek. I think that uh, and Ultimately, Paris wins, and maybe Derek would have had a better chance against uh, Kayla. We won't know until we ask the jury. Um, but I still feel like the Derek might have been the more sure thing. Uh, it's not a fault anymore, but I, I'm just curious about what you guys uh, think yeah, about that. Yeah, I, I can co-sign that. I also felt that as well. I thought there was a chance that if she, which I didn't want to have happen, I wasn't even really entertaining this possibility, but uh, if Paris did take Wilson to the final two, I thought there was an opportunity for her to not only get the votes of her friends, but the people who also don't want to see someone like Derek win the game. Not only is he part of Dela, but he's, you know, the straight white male that Johnny doesn't want to vote for. And I do, by the way, I have problems with that. I don't like the fact that Johnny's just like, oh, well, you know, I don't want to vote for, you know, the random guy that's in the final two because of the fact that women are normally lose to guys in North American Big Brother. I mean, that may, that may, be, may very well be true. And maybe you can give it an extra eye or, or an extra look over, but to just dismiss it out of hand, which in some ways it did seem like he did, I, I that didn't sit well with me. No, I agree. I think they should just vote for whoever played the best game, period. No matter if they're a guy, no matter what race they're, no matter whatever, no matter if they have children at home, whatever. Um, they should vote for whoever played the best game. But okay. I I agree in terms of the uh in who Paris should have brought. Uh well, I guess it doesn't matter now. She should have brought whoever. Um, but I was really happy when Paris brought Kayla and was saying that they're they're gonna have a double women uh final two right. i was so excited about that because it was okay. like two strong females players there wasn't like one strong female player and one like goat who they just like carried to the end it was like two strong players i honestly was gonna i was thinking about it at the time i was like i will be happy if either of them win like because they both played really strong games um very different games but I was so excited that we were finally having a strong female season. And I was thinking the whole time, like, okay, we have all these really strong females and now we're going to get to the end. And what happens if a guy wins this season? And it's like, I'll get it. But at the same time, it's like, darn, what a waste. We had all these really great female characters and now we've got a great female winner. Yeah, we do. And I want to just concentrate on some positive things really quickly. As Melissa said, not only was it a great season, but it was led by some really strong females. And these two really were awesome. It's like getting the second best thing on your Christmas list. For me personally, uh, I wanted Kayla. That was like my number one present. That was the present I asked my parents <laughs> for, but they they didn't have the money to get that. Instead, they got the second best thing on the list. And I'm happy with that. I'm really, really thrilled that Paris ended up winning the game. I thought she did a great job. I was on the Paris train from the beginning. 
not just from the preseason, but early on, I really liked what she was doing. I love the fact that she talked to the cameras. I know it became a little bit unbearing with many of the fans and the life eaters. And Arissa even talked to her about that at the end, but it led us into what she was thinking and what she was going to possibly do later on in the game. Now, look, in the middle part of the game, I do think she got a little bit messy. And at the end, it was specifically in the final five. I wasn't a fan, but overall and throughout the throughout the entire way, I thought she did a kick-ass job managing to know where generally everybody was at the right time. Even if she wasn't in those alliances, I feel like for the most part, she had a handle on what was the layout of the house and what she needed to do. I give her all the props in the world. Um, Erica could take note of this for willing to throw HOHs left and right. She knew she didn't need to win them. And it's so, it's gotta be so hard. I'm a competitive person. If I was in there, I'd want to win everything I could as well. But she just knew to took her foot foot off the gas and uh because of that she was able to make her way to the end even when at final five they're tar they're targeting one of the people and i think you know in my head i'm like paris is the person you should be targeting i have the most confidence in paris to be able to pull out this knowledge at the end anything that's final four or final three related i think paris would be good at something like that i really didn't think it was maddie i feel like maddie thought she crumbles under pressure a little bit but they made a mistake because of some of the things that paris had done early on in terms of trying to look weak and immature and not very not knowledgeable and she did hide her degree in the fact that she was in law school so you know i give her all the props in the world for winning this game it's not like i'm sad that paris won i'm psyched that she got to the end i'm psyched that she was able to pull out a win i'm psyched that wilson ended up as the seventh member of the jury it's just that uh, we were living for the goddess like the idea of kayla slayla and uh when that didn't come to fruition it was like ah we like the second best present but we kind of wanted the first Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the, the throwing comps thing is a is a huge thing to note because uh, I've been talking all season long about how I think that competitions are more important in Big Brother Canada for sure. Um, and with that comes in an added target if you're winning competitions. So, I mean, I think Kevin Martin has short, sort of shown us the way throw competitions at the start and then win them when you start to need to have to win them. And we saw how when difficult you to need to when you to need win. to start to start to win. Need to win them. <laughs> uh, we saw how difficult it was for Paris to do this because as when we went over her game, we said, Every single week, she had a moment where she talked to the cameras and she was like, oh, I need to start winning competitions. I shouldn't have thrown that one. Oh, I need to win the next HOH. I need to win. I need to win. I need to win. But when it came down to it, most of the time, she still threw the competition. Uh, certainly toward the end, she started to try to win them and she failed uh, often, but she ended up winning them when she needed to. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's it's yeah. something something to note, which is that the competitions did not change significantly from last season. We anticipated that they might and that the that you may not be able to win out anymore. However, that is not the case. It was still a quiz at the final uh, part of Final Three. Um, this is still a very winnable game if you are good enough at competitions. Uh, if you are going into the Big Brother Canada Six House and you have not studied Kevin's notes and you have not been studying all season long, uh, I don't know what you're doing because Paris did both of those things and she just won the game. Yep, she was kick ass at the end. She knew exactly what was coming. I would also like to give it up to Big Brother Canada. I, I harp on them sometimes with some of the things they do wrong, but I'll always give it up to them on things they do right. Their part one, part two, part three, everything was gorgeous tonight and I thought it was really, really mm -hmm. fair. Like I always think back to that yeah. um, Godfrey part one HOH when it, to me it was evident that Godfrey was always going to beat Ashley and Sarah in that part one endurance because it was so athletic and so oriented towards somebody with a really, really amazing body like Godfrey. But I felt like this part one was so fair. You know, not only is it physical, you're having to pull yourself across, but it's also more agile in terms of trying to balance the coins on the things. And obviously it had a lot of drama to it and it looked great because the coins could fall off at any time and you could, you know, be leading 19, 19, 19, and all of a sudden go back down to zero, like what happened with Derek and what happened with Paris. Um, I would say really quickly too, I wish they would really stop taping their shows. And I, and I, I maybe I'm just, you know, farting into the wind here with trying <laughs> to get them to do this, but uh, I don't understand why they do this because I felt like there was a clue early on with the fact that Paris was going to win. It's the same thing that happened with Hamza when they showed Hamza praying in the eviction episode that he was eventually sent home on. I felt like, you know what? That seems like a clue. That seems like foreshadowing to me that they're telling me that something's up with Hamza because the music that they played seemed a little melancholy. Instead, tonight, they showed Paris for the 
like one of the first times I don't remember her doing this very often praying. She didn't, she, she didn't want to pray in, in, in the house because she didn't want to be uh, attacked on Twitter for her faith. So she finally chose to do it in front of the cameras this time that I saw. And she was, uh, it, she, it seemed like that they were trying to show her in a positive light. Like when they showed her saying, this is my game, I'm going to win this. And yeah, they didn't show anyone else know. doing that. I know, right. So I, to me, I, I felt like early on that was a clue that Paris was going to win. I wish they would stop doing stuff like that uh, because, you know, for people like me who watch the show, I feel like it, it makes it a little bit more obvious what's probably going to happen. What's, what's probably going to happen. Yeah, I totally agree. And, and what I also want to say is, is I loved the intro video that they played where it was like uh, going through each of their games. Um, normally, I hate that. Normally, I can't stand it. I feel like it's such like a boring thing that we have to just sit through because we've already seen the whole season. Why do we need to like go through the, their games again? But I felt like it was so powerful, so well done, so emotional. I got goosebumps for each of their games being like, wow, they all really deserve it. And it was just like, I never feel that way. So I was really into this episode. I felt like this was one of the best finales I've seen. It was so fun to watch. Yes. Uh, if this is the part of the podcast where uh, we say things that sh they should do uh, for the like 50th time, uh, Brent, then we should also talk about how they should do uh, the old style of jury questioning. Um, mm -hmm. They should stop having the votes being cast uh, with a half hour left in the show and then just trash their entire momentum in in the show with a bunch of like it, they were fun montages, but like it was too much. It was it, they, too they had, much. They had three we need a reunion. packages. It was yes. three freaking packages of clips going to commercial, coming back, going to commercial, coming back. Please stop. Mm -hmm. I like. I mean, like, it should be no more than two. Probably just one. I think Big Brother US, like, they bring in the people that didn't make jury. They ask them, like, one or two questions. They maybe show a clip or two, and then it's like, here's the winner. You know, I mean, uh, maybe there's a happy medium there somewhere. Yeah, also. well, first of all, if they're going to pre-tape it, they should do jury questioning without the audience participation. I'm I'm serious about that they really need to get rid of that it's so it makes it so biased and i don't like it at all also they should um do an actual reunion because that's what we want to see i want the final two to be out there and i want them to be able to ask questions of people like you know i i want to see the interactions i don't want to see uh we literally don't see kayla in paris for like the second half of it after they after they we didn't even votes, see kayla gone. I didn't even see Kayla after she lost the game. Like yeah, you don't usually, see them at all. Arissa always talks to the person who's the runner-up, and she was she was somewhere else. She was they didn't even talk to her. So uh, I don't know what happened with that. Maybe she was crying. I, I I if I was her, I'd be crying because I felt like she had a good chance to win. Julie in the chat uh, says, I'm pretty sure uh, I saw Taryn fall asleep on Twitch during the set, the latter half of the, the show. It's true. It was like, terrible. I was so pumped up. And then just like m all of my energy and adrenaline was drained out of me by the time they read the votes. And what would have been a very exciting, explosive moment for me to watch Paris win six to one, I was like, oh, it's Paris. Paris won. Uh, like, I, 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 like oh. the momentum was just gone. And if they really want to do the, the montages and everything then then read the votes right after their cast with a half hour left in the show have our have all have the winner be announced everyone is like oh this is crazy then bring everyone out show them the montages and have them talk about it have yeah, them they have a lot more season. energy they yes. would have a so ton more have energy talk about it they just showed the clips and then didn't even discuss it arissa's just like wow crazy right it was like they need to have like back and forth or like what did you think of seeing that moment or something like that it's just uh, it's just a letdown Unless it's Veronica. Don't ask her a question on live television. That doesn't work very well. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I just feel like there is so much, uh, like they did such a good job with most of the rest of the show. It just like that really just fell flat and killed the momentum. Um, I also, I, I, uh, something else that I really loved was the, the music uh, throughout the episode, the super uber dramatic music. Mm -hmm. I, I love it. I love how cheesy it is to use that kind of music on a show like this. Um, it's something that Big Brother US just does doesn't even dare to do um and i wish they would because uh it makes it so much more fun to just be so good. over dramatic yeah um, um i'm still also, laughing at the fact go ahead go ahead no you go ahead i was gonna laugh at the fact that that marissa keeps talking about the fact that it's heaven and hell and yet there's somehow this medieval thing came in and it, i <laughs> i st they still cannot figure out their theme for the entire season like i don't like they i mean look i love part one the whole uh, river of uh 
I Thames what or whatever. Called. Right, yeah, Thames? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, in fact, I think it is three coins um, when you have to get across the river, right? Because I know there was oh, only yeah. a Justice League. It, it was on a Justice League episode where they had to like give them three coins. Anyway, so uh, you have to like give three coins to get across the river. And I love that part one. I thought it was so fair to everybody, like I said. And But it looked great, and it sounded great. So uh, like all that stuff is wonderful. But I agree with you, Taryn. Like, the last 30 minutes was just – it was such a slog, and it wasn't fun. Like, if you – like, here's the thing. If you announce the winner – I'm sure they're thinking, well, if we announce the winner, then people will tune, tune out. But it's a terrible oh, – like. It Last 30 minutes sticks. anyway. Oh, sorry. Huh? I think someone in the chat said the river sticks. I think it is the, the river, river sticks. sticks. Yeah. Yeah, the river. Yeah, you're right. It is the river sticks. I think the river they announced the is an winner. actual river. Oh, so I did. I know a river. <laughs> Just not the right river. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I, I think if you announce the winner, uh, like people are more likely to stay tuned. I think like if people aren't yes. there to be like, oh, winner. See you later. Uh, people are like winner. This makes me even more invested in like hearing more people talk. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and maybe the ratings wouldn't bear that out, but they've never tried it before. So I don't know how they think or, or why they think that. Um, so yeah, it's that's that's just uh, it's crazy to me that they don't do it. Um, I do have a question from Tom Palmer, and I've seen this from a few different people, uh, so I want to get your you guys' thoughts on it. Uh, first of all, we had Sarah for the jury roundtable. Um, a lot of people expected Kevin, um, but uh, I actually felt like Sarah was a, a good pick here. Um, a season full of so many strong women, they went to their most recent female winner. Um, so I felt like that was a, a good pick. But K Tom Palmer wants to know, uh, do you think Sarah had influence as the host of the roundtable? She was the most pro Paris of the winners. Is this maybe where Johnny, Ali, and Liv started to come around to the idea that they might wanna give Paris their vote? Melissa, what do you think? I was wondering that because she was the one who was talking about being like uh, going with your heart and being emotional and like all that stuff. And she even said that she's an emotional player and things like that. So, I, I mean, I was wondering that same thing. And I, I don't want to sit there and say that she definitely did because we have no idea, but it's totally possible. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that she had uh, much impact. I, I'll just say that uh, seeing Sarah Hanlon was wonderful. I, I love Sarah Hanlon. And you know what? That is the kind of player that she was. She was the one who, who wore her heart on her sleeve. She probably does identify with Paris the most because Paris is probably the most like her. Sarah was never in a showmance, unless you count Willow. But uh, she was uh, she was definitely more like uh, Paris in the house. And uh, I, I don't know. I feel like that uh, in some ways, uh, these uh, Kayla and Derek... Uh, uh, showmance might have represented uh, Ashley and Zach a little bit to Sarah, but I mean, look, she sounded totally fair to me. I think that she was just asking probing questions. Like if the jury, anytime the, the jury was set on something, she was there to ask something to challenge that. I mean, that's what Dr. Will does in the uh, Big Brother US version when he's asking, you know, people say things that they, they, they want to just do a mic drop moment and say something. And Will always tries to push back on them to say, you know, well, well, what about this? Or are you, you know, are you, are you being bitter when you say that? Or, you know, what about this when this person did this? I mean, was that something that you would consider? And I feel like that Sarah did a great job of that. So it was great to see her. And I felt like she was probably about as fair as she could be. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's 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 definitely been an issue with Big Brother Canada before having, uh, you know, outside influence on the house, uh, even going back to its roots in season one, uh, when we have uh, Dan enter the house. Uh, and then obviously, uh, a lot of stuff with season five with the audience cheering. Um, and, uh, and now, th I mean, even the winners just being in there talking to the final three candidates. Um, a lot of people are saying that had a huge impact if it did come down to the jury speeches. And if Paris had gone into that final two saying what she had said to those winners, uh, maybe that leads to a very different outcome. Um, and that's definitely possible if it was the questions that swayed Ali, Liv, and Johnny. I don't um, believe that. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm... I'm trending in the uh, the opposite direction of that as well, Brent. Um, just because, again, uh, the fact that they all voted the same and they had the prepared speeches, um, I'm willing to bet that uh, that they were going to vote that way beforehand. Uh, maybe it's possible Paris could have lost their votes. Um, but uh, but I, I think a lot of this has to just uh, come down to like when we talk to them, uh, when did they switch? What made them switch? Uh, what could have made them switch back? Who knows? Um, I want to know all of these things, Melissa. Yeah, I mean, I, I have no idea. I I kind of, I mean, I understand what you guys are saying with like the prepared speeches, but those speeches didn't make any sense in the context. So it's hard for me to be like, well, you know, they had these prepared speeches, so they definitely already planned it out beforehand. And, and to be honest, I do think the speeches and the 
um, jury questioning had an influence because it had an influence on me. So, you know, I think it's totally possible that it could have been that. But I mean, I'm very excited to possibly ask them about it uh, when we do interviews with them or if we get to do interviews with them. Yes, uh, I just got a message from uh, from Ariel, who has been tracking the diary room count all season long, and uh, the the message was the three pillars of strategy tie each other at the top of the diary room wow. count at the end of the season. <laughs> Paris, Kayla, and Johnny all tie with 113 uh, diary rooms. We got it right throughout the season. Uh, that's crazy. <laughs> they really were the pillars of strategy, though. I think it'd be interesting for them to hear about that because they probably, I mean, maybe they they recognize that they were the three like powerhouses, but you know, it'd be nice to be able to let them know that they really were the three powerhouses of the season. Yeah, and uh, Derek uh, Derek ends up in the about the middle of the pack uh, as as one of the right. final three members. Yeah, that's uh, part for the course. So I I saw it earlier today. I saw it was a poll tweeted. Who do you want to win Big Brother Canada? It was like, uh, you know, 60% uh, Kayla, 30% Paris, or maybe it was like 35% Paris and like 5% Derek. Like nobody out there. And it's not a, like it's not an indictment of him. He's I'm sure he's a sweet guy. It's just that he was a little vanilla, a little boring. And you know, if you're going to root for Dela, you're going to root for Kayla, I feel like. Yeah. I mean, I'm going I will say that I was very impressed with Derek's game by the end. Like about halfway through, I was like, this guy, he's not doing anything. This is awful. And then he really picked it up to the point where he was able to get Will to throw the competition. And I think that was his most impressive move. And I think, I mean, if he went into jury questioning, I'm, I'd be very nervous for him because uh, when he went and talked with the uh, uh, past winners and they asked him, what was your biggest move that Kayla didn't make? He's like, well, I got in a showmance with Kayla. And it's like, that's literally <laughs> exactly the opposite of what we're asking you when the move should have been, I got will to throw the final four veto. And, you know, I think that also he would have talked up the fact that I've never watched the show before. I am not a fan. I don't know the show at all. Like, and the jury is made up of a lot of super fans. And I feel like if I was in the jury, I'd be like, um, okay. So you're like bragging about the fact that you don't like the show and that you've never watched right. it. I'd be insulted. Yeah. So yeah. I feel like it's, for the best that he didn't end up in the final two. Yeah. yeah. Also, uh, I know I'm just going to agree with her that, uh, you know, I, I never liked what Derek had to say the first time around. The fact that he was always talking about the fact that I've never seen the show before. I'm like, mm -hmm. uh, I, to, I mean, to me, that's just insulting to the show itself. It's like, oh, so you don't really care about this show. That yeah. You're on. Like, so I shouldn't award yeah. you because you're yeah. going to have either Paris or Kayla opposite him going like, this is my life. This is my favorite show. And like yelling and being like, I'm a super fan. I've watched every single season. And he's just like, I've never seen this show before. Um, I've never even watched oh, the full season. Only, I only like, somebody, only somebody that doesn't watch the show thinks it's a badge of honor to not watch the show right? I, know, right? <laughs> I will say it too uh, really quickly that uh kayla you know what you did yourself proud girl we love you honestly uh, mm -hmm. you had so many fans out there and honestly so often it seems like the the real winner of the season isn't the person who won the title like you know oh, yeah. Ika wong to me is like far and away everyone's favorite person she never won big brother so mm -hmm. i feel like that uh you know kayla is going to be a g dot otis for a long time i think kayla will be remembered for sure yeah. i think um, she'll be remembered yeah, so I did get a lot of these questions as well. Um, one of them, uh, the sort of the representative question here from Simply Pure, um, who wants to know, seems like the winners nowadays are ones with more heart. Uh, could Kayla have won if she put a little more emotion to her, into her speech? That's I, not possible. That's I, not possible for her. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I interrupted sorry. you. Well, I, 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 this ties into a bigger question, which is that uh, the, the, this seems to be a trend, right? Uh, people have been talking about this. Uh, they count Paul versus Nicole. I personally wouldn't, but uh, at the very least, Paul versus versus Josh, uh, Ross versus Mar uh, Marissa, um, and uh, and now Kayla versus Paris. There, uh, a lot of people are seeing this as this. It's often nowadays in Big Brother the story of how somebody lost the game as opposed to how somebody won it. I personally, I'm not sure I would necessarily even qualify that, but I think people would say that uh, at the very least, the best, uh, the better player might not have won uh, because they were not better at jury management um, and. Uh, 
so do you guys think this is a trend? What, what do you what do you think about this? Is there something that Kayla could have done uh, jury management wise, emotion wise, uh, just general thoughts on this? I don't uh, know. I feel like, like I feel like the days of people putting aside their feelings and, and voting for the person who really got them, you know, the person who got got. Uh, I feel like that those days are gone. I, I, I don't know, but it does feel to me like it's more about the people who are, are cast on these shows, who are put into the who end up in the jury, who end up voting for these people. It's it's all about them. It's all about their feelings. You can talk mm-hmm. about jury management, but I don't really remember having questions about jury management early on, even when going all the way back to like Survivor All Stars. I mean, I I guess we talked about jury management, not with that label, um, but it didn't seem like it was as a big deal. Like we we indicted the people on the jury more than we ever indicted the people who were sitting in the final two. Like I was so mad at big Tom and Lex because of their behavior on the jury, not because of anything that ever, you know, Boston Rob or Amber had ever done. So, you know, moving forward in time, I feel like that it's, I don't know if people are just, they're more pussies nowadays, but like most of what do you think? I mean, like uh, it just kind of seemed like it. I look back to Big Brother 16 with Derek um, and the fact that when each person was leaving, he would like take them aside and bond with them. And even if he was the one who was making them leave, he would bond with them and, you know, talk about things outside of the house and try and hang out with them uh, right before they left. And I have a feeling that like that, I mean, I think that that is crucial. And I think Kayla could have done that. I think she could have sat down with whoever's leaving and been like, look, I had to do this. You were like a great player, whatever she had to tell them and just try and bond with them um, rather than just sending them out the door. Like, yeah, I got you. Um, And I, I think that that is a huge influential factor. And I think that if Derek didn't do that and the jury had ended up thinking Derek played me, Derek played us all. He really like he, we had no idea he was running the whole house, which by the end they realized, I think they would have voted for Cody. Um, And so I think that that was crucial as they, he made them feel like they're, he's also friends with them and that, you know, he wasn't trying to betray them or make them look a fool. He was just playing the game and he had to do it. And I think that that's part of it is that Kayla kind of made them look, look foolish and I think they didn't want to look foolish. And I think that's what what it has to come down to. So so that leads me to the question. Uh, and I really want to hear from you guys what you think. Uh, do you think that Kayla lost the game or did Paris win the game? Um, if you had to choose one, uh, is this is this a Paul situation where I think we all agreed that Paul lost the game uh, and and rather than Josh kind of winning the game? Uh, is that this, is that the case here? Obviously not to the same extent. Uh, or do we see that Paris is uh, just essentially outplayed Kayla and won the game? Um, Melissa, what do you think? I think the difference is that um, with like Marissa or situations like. Uh, Nicole and Paul, those are situations where I can point to the winner and be like, their jury questioning, their, you know, their um, description of their game was horrible. Like that was awful. Whereas Paris did an amazing job this episode. She won the last two or she won the last two HOHs. She, um, she really described her game um, in a very accurate way, I think. I don't think that she made anything up when she was uh, describing the way she played to the jury. So I think in this situation, I wouldn't put this in the same category as Marissa or a Paul situation. I don't think they're voting against Kayla besides Ryan. Oh. But um, I think that they, they're they voting for Paris and I think that they were impressed with her game. So I don't necessarily put this in the same category. I think that Kayla didn't, do a great job in the end. I think that Kayla played a much better game than Paris throughout or a much more impressive game. Um, Paris was more under the radar. Didn't she didn't get nominated because no one thought she was a threat, not because she uh, was so good that she was able to evade the block. Um, I think Kayla was much more out there and she was able to scrap and survive every week. So I was very impressed with Kayla's game, but I don't think it's a situation where Paris, where the only reason Paris won was because Kayla lost. I think that, Paris won in her own right. Yeah, I think it's probably more of a mix to me as well. And I hate being fancy 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 about it. But if you're forcing me to choose, I'll say Kayla lost. And uh, I just don't think that she's capable of making the connections that Paris was able to. And I do feel like the jury was a little butthurt in some of the things that they felt. Um, I don't I'm, I'm a little bummed that Johnny wasn't able to look past himself. It does seem like that it was more about the fact that he wanted to get one last, you know, ha ha 
over Dela rather than vote for the person who really, really got him. Because that's because that's the real tea, you guys. They got Johnny. And I don't really know if he kind of wants to acknowledge that. I, 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 in some ways, I feel like he doesn't. And uh, I, I kind of miss the days where people would vote for the person who really got them. I guess it all started in 14 with Frank and Dan, like Frank's not willing to vote for Dan, even though he like totally got him and snowed him. And it was his fault that he ended up going out of the game and trusting the wrong person, but he still wouldn't put his key in the box because he's too butthurt about it. Yeah, I said it. So, you know, I don't know. I, I, I feel like they're, they're, they're so to answer your question. I feel like Kayla lost it, but uh, it's, it's, it's a lot closer as Melissa notes. Yeah, I, I think it, it was definitely a combination, um, but I think Paris won, to be honest. I think Paris just outplayed Kayla. Kayla, uh, I think the, the mistakes that Kayla makes here um, in terms of uh, how she works the jury, um, we talked about it for a long time before the finale, the narrative that she set up uh, of, I'm going to cut Derek at final three, this is my big moment. Um, I I bet you, if Maddie had influence on that jury, I bet it was what she said about the, the romantic notion that Kayla had about cutting Derek at final three that really convinced them. I, that it convinced me when when uh, when Maddie was saying it because I was like that's exactly what I see. Um, so the narrative that she set up about I'm going to cut Derek, I'm going to cut Derek, I need to cut Derek. Why would you ever respect me if I didn't cut Derek? Um, and then in the in the final two questioning, I thought she talked about Derek way too much. She she said like one of the main selling points of her game was like no guys I promise I was gonna cut Derek. Um, and what was my best move? Uh, shaping Derek into the player that I wanted him to be. Um, and she didn't talk enough about her herself um and i and i felt that that was uh that was an error and it all ties into this idea that she played up this narrative that really hurt her in the end when it came to jury votes and then of course also the way that she handled certain jury jury members uh in particular ryan um and uh, and all of that uh that was how she contributed toward the loss but i also think that paris did a lot to win over the jury. Um, she did a lot of work with Ryan. She was the one that basically turned uh, Dela against Ryan. She was the bane of Ryan's existence in that house. But she, uh, despite the fact that she was almost worse to, to Ryan strategically than Dela was, uh, Ryan loved her and hated Dela. And that was uh, due to the bonding that she put in, the work that she put in with Ryan. Uh, she threw Maddie under that bus so often, and you know for a fact that Allie was in that jury house telling Maddie of all the times Paris threw her under the bus, made fun of her, all of that stuff. We saw how Paris treated Maddie in the in the final five, and yet she was Paris's biggest cheerleader in the jury oh. house. Um, and I know, I'm like, oh. a oh my God. I know like, Maddie I needs I just to just watch the Maddie. season and see what happened. No, wait, don't watch the season. Watch the feeds and see what happened. Uh, yeah, but, um, but the point is that Paris Paris convinced her. Paris had will, and ultimately, when it comes down to it, I disagree. I don't think that Johnny. And Allie and Liv voted out of bitterness. I think that they voted because they genuinely felt like Paris did a good job and they wanted to reward that. Um, and I do think that they were personally influenced by the fact that they didn't have great feelings toward Dela. But uh, I think it, it's proof okay. that they were very much willing to vote for Kayla, that they, when they came out of the house, they were willing to vote for Kayla. By the time they went to vote, they had changed their minds. Um, and I think that was because of work that Paris did. Paris gave Maddie instructions to go into the jury house to tell people. And I think that was another impact. And I think th that's why I think that Paris won the game, uh, even though I still think that Kayla played ultimately a stronger game overall. I think that Paris came pretty close and I think that she won it the wasn't game just from they, Kayla. It, it wasn't, Taryn, that they, that they were just open to voting for Kayla. They were affirmatively in Kayla's corner. They were like, yeah. well, you know, hold a gun to my head yeah, now and force me to vote. Like Johnny and Liv and Allie were all like, you know, Kayla. And he starts to talk about Kayla and Ryan's like, oh, but she's so terrible. And they're, you know, pushing back on it. They're affirmatively in her camp. Mm -hmm. So obviously something happened, you know, uh, so you, I, I take your point that maybe Paris, you can say Paris won it because she, you know, put, sent Maddie in there to, you know, with instructions and Maddie was able to explain to them. Maddie was able to poke some holes in Kayla's game and make their make them feel more open once they've calmed down to voting for Paris but if that's the truth then they're a lot more weak minded than i thought they were be, you know for listening to Maddie for with some i know that's what i don't understand jury. Why they would get influenced by Maddie at all. If that has any influence on people, I don't understand it. 
I, I, I think people should not undervalue the strategic benefit of sending somebody to the jury house with instructions because uh, we saw Nicole do this when she was up against uh, Paul and Big Brother 18 and it worked. We saw Dan do this a lot in Big Brother 10 and he won unanimously. Um, I think this is a very, very uh, good move if you can pull it off. Send them in with a particular message. That way you can be consistent with that message and the message that you end up selling both to the rest of the people in the house and to the jury when you get down to the end. Um, and uh, and I think that was a, a, a very, uh, you know, a good move by Paris in terms of trying to win the game. Uh, but again, there's, there's so much that we need to hear uh, from uh, from the jury before we can talk no, there's not. about this. We don't need to hear from the jury. We need to hear from Johnny, Liv, and Allie. That's, That's who we I need mean, to hear yeah. from. Yeah, I know. Right? Like a <laughs> freaking Ryan, Ryan, Will, and Maddie can go to yeah, hell. I don't, don't want to hear from, from Ryan. Yeah, I don't need to hear from them, honestly. I really <laughs> don't. And I also want to hear from Paris a little bit. And then, again, it's not that I butthurt that Paris won. I'm, I'm thrilled she won. I loved her from the beginning. It's just that, you know, there was a, um, the, the, um, the, the, I think the drag queen in me wanted Kayla to win. You know, like the the work or a work. That part of me wanted to see Kayla win, and there are elements to that that also wanted to see Paris win. It's just that Kayla was giving me, she was serving me a little bit more. You know what I mean, Melissa? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I just, I yeah, I I feel like I really just want to talk to the jury right now so I can figure out what happened in the jury house if their speeches and their jury questioning really did change their minds because I've always wondered that is do, do they already have their minds set before jury questioning or does that actually have any impact at all like would they ever consider changing their mind based off of jury questioning I just feel like it's very rare yeah that's what I'm wondering it's like it makes me think like what's even the point unless we do jury questioning long in advance for a longer period of time or something like that. So they can like go back and forth with the jury rather than having them blurt out a quick 30 second answer. You know, I don't know. I just, I, I think I, I don't know. I, I want to say that um, there is one thing that I'm extremely disappointed about, and that is that if Paris was going to win no matter what, and I think that's probably the case, I am extremely disappointed that Kayla did not win the HOH because we missed out on some very, very epic television. Uh, just like to be able to watch Kayla cut Derek, I think would have been so good. And we were robbed of that. And the one benefit of that, I thought, was that, okay, well, at least Kayla's going to win. But she didn't win. Paris won. It. And Paris was the the rightful winner here. So uh, I'm I'm mad that we didn't get to see Kayla cut Derek. I want yeah. uh, imagine the television. Imagine what it would have been like. Kayla cuts Derek and then loses to Paris. And it's not even because of Derek. It's just because she cut Derek and then lost. And the, oh, it would have been so good. Oh uh, yeah, about it. that was that was. I know. I like. I that's what I was saying the whole time. Like I, I like I. You know, in my head, I'm like, okay, if Paris wins uh, the part three HOH, then Kayla's gonna win the game. But I knew that that was gonna deprive me of the epic moment of Kayla cutting Derek. But I also knew that Kayla cutting Derek could possibly lead to her losing the game. If I had known the entire time that it was a losing battle, then I would have just said, well, screw it, and just give me what I want, and that way I can have my cake and eat it too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> um, we have a question from uh, Daquan Wizard. Uh, is this the are these the best final two jury speeches ever, ever? What do you think, Brent? Oh, I don't know. I'm trying to think. Uh, I'm going to like, I mean, ever like, are we talking Big Brother Canada? Uh, I, th I don't know. Big Brother Canada wise, I think they were probably pretty great. Um, I felt like uh, Sarah Hanlon ha handled herself really, really well. Uh, during the uh, Big Brother Canada 3 questioning. The problem was that Godfrey just didn't have as much of a chance, but I did feel like when he was talking that he was really persuasive in what he was saying, but the jury just wasn't opening to listening to the game that he actually played. We they got, were like, more two questions. Right. They were more interested in thinking about the game that they thought he played. Like they, they thought he was just doing things. So uh, I felt like that was really handled well. Uh, obviously, the Pax brothers and Kelsey were awful. Kevin Martin and Karen was was really well. I, I thought that uh, it Kevin was great and Karen was serviceable. Um, I also thought that, uh, um, uh, well, I can't even remember back that far. So whatever. I, I'm done. <laughs> no, I feel like it's the best combination, like the best yes, two yeah. of them I'd say, for yeah. sure. Cause most of the time you get one person who's got a, either a pretty good speech or a great speech. And you got one person who's just either fine or awful. 
And this is the one of the first times that I can remember where it's been two really great speeches where if they were in their own season, they both could have won. Do you know what I mean? Rather right. than just having one yeah, I, I will say that also because of the, because of the fact that it's in front of a live audience the, you know they they and maybe the show won't do this because they're like oh well, we like that because it creates so much energy but the fact that the jury and then the audience start to applaud is what leads the final two to start screaming so uh, i can't remember who it was a uh, starlet in this in the in the chat said it was the best screaming match i've ever watched before <laughs> that they kind of felt like that to me like paris naturally mm -hmm. talks kind of fast and loud when she's nervous and then kayla starts to emulate that you know so uh i it was I, like I who could be louder than the other yeah. it was just like i wanted them to calm down i yeah. loved the screaming oh i was so into it i think they, they had me so pumped. Karen. lies and deception what you think i'm lying what are you i'm shocked yeah. that friends and i are like that was too much and you're like i'm living for it i was yeah, that's not you can literally watch my face as i'm like so really angry. i was like i mean part of it is that i got like no sleep because i was preparing for the kayla podcast last night so i'm like a bit more emotional than usual but like <laughs> I, I was like near tears i was like so into it they had me okay um, you're lying no no, no, I don't no, no. This, this is this is this is fake news. There is, this is no way. Terrence, like I cried. No, <laughs> oh, man, way. Yeah, Bro, no Terrence, way. I don't think so. This is what happens when I open up and I'm a little genuine on the podcast. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, I, I I've never know. seen that side of you in four years. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, but see, I, I did love it. But thinking about uh thinking about like the like epic final two uh moments, um, you know, uh, Dr. Will had a terrible but very epic speech uh, in season two. Um um, thinking about uh, uh, Dan in season ten had great uh, a great moment, but like in both of these, their the other person was not great. Andy yeah. had a great final two performance, but Gina Marie was Gina terrible. Marie was the opposite, oh. opposition yeah. there. So yeah, I think and, and uh, Kevin was amazing. I loved watching Kevin's speech; it was so passionate. But. I genuinely do think this was the best combination because both of them were screaming at each other. They were both like uh, just so passionate, so into it, making their arguments. I loved it. Uh, I, I I do think this I also, was potentially uh, one of the best final two speeches uh, ever, the combination of the two of them. Yeah. yeah, I think 14 was also really good too because Ian had so much heart when he spoke and you like you really really connected with Ian, but Dan gave you the villain that you wanted to, you know, you that you love to hate. So I felt like that was that was a really well done as well. All right. Uh, we have a question from Andrew who asks, there is no doubt now the Melissa curse is real, right? Right, Melissa? Whatever, guys. Whatever. <laughs> I think that the uh, the Terran curse is real. Like, you haven't won much lately. You you also, I won the like, Celebrity Big Brother like a month ago. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot about that. Like, that doesn't even count. <laughs> and I, 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 that was too long ago. It doesn't <laughs> count. Okay. Uh, and you lost the draft and you lost the stock watch, even though you tried to cover all your bases. I uh, did my best. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Well, that that, that's, that leads us perfectly into uh, another question from uh, Kiran, uh, who's uh, throwing some shade my way uh, to me. How does it feel to lose to Brent in another Big Brother draft, uh, Taryn? Uh, not great. Not great, Kiran. Not great. Uh, not good, Bob. Not good. Uh, <laughs> not better, great, better, Bob. <laughs> better hope you still got it for Survivor. Um, I do have a Survivor draft update. We'll do a Survivor podcast soon. Um, the, uh, the Survivor numbers on the Survivor draft right now, Brent is down to one person. Melissa is down to one person. I have five people remaining. So uh, <laughs> I'm looking okay in the survivor draft. Looking okay. Right. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm just really psyched about the fact that because uh, you know the the Josh thing was such a it was such a you know shot in the dark. It was I mean come mm -hmm. on I, I mean like you were laughing at me when I picked Josh and, and I was even kind of laughing at myself when I picked Josh first off the board and then he ended up winning Big Brother like in it and it was a total like I can't believe that just happened kind of way. This one was totally different where like I saw what Paris could do from the beginning and I really believed in her and um I, there weren't many fans of Paris. A lot of people did not like her talking constantly to the cameras and having these grand plans in her head and then thinking she went out and actually accomplished them when in reality we knew that it was other people's doings and it's sort of like the magician who you know somehow gets to the end of a magic trick and it's like oh wow I did it and even though they had really nothing to do with it <laughs> so uh, I think that it was really gnawing at people Paris I'm talking about but uh, she, you can't deny that uh, there was elements to Paris that really won you over at the end and I was so glad to back her oh, the yeah. entire time 
Oh, yeah. definitely. I loved how passionate she was. Like, I, I really felt it when she was saying, you know, that she's a huge fan. She's been watching it all this time. And I loved when she met the final or the previous winners and she went up and hugged all of them and was so right. excited. You could tell how much it meant to her. And I know it meant a lot to Kayla too, but she didn't really show it. And I feel like that's part of her problem is that she couldn't really connect with people and she couldn't really understand the mindset that this jury was in, whereas Paris could connect with them on an emotional level, like throughout the whole game and especially during the jury questioning and right as they were leaving the house. So, you know, I feel like that's a huge part of it as well. Yeah, I uh, I wish I'd gone back to the draft podcast because I think there is a clip that I could play Brent style right now where I say right after Brent picks Paris that I say, I think if I lose this draft, it's because I didn't get Paris. Um, yeah. And uh, I wish I had the clip. Uh, yeah, I, I, I made a note. I made a note uh, during that, that podcast about the fact that uh, this was a really uh, female laden season in terms of who I was really had, had my eye on. You know, most of the men were duds early on and they continue to show that throughout most of the season. I mean, at the end, we're calling one of the best players of the season, Derek, you know, Wilson, because he's so boring. But the women were really bringing it this season, and, and you gave me the opportunity because you won the previous draft to pick first. I picked Paris, and I said at the time that I'm going a new direction this season. I'm going to actually look and listen and uh, just try to put a little bit more head with my heart, and that's how I got to uh, selecting Paris. And then, you know what? I was like, I don't want to be Fancy Fencerton with the stock watch and have all my bases covered so i'm just gonna shovel my chips in on paris as well and look what happened ring a ding ding <laughs> i i see brent you're usually very reliable and i expected you to pick another josh and uh you you changed it up on me i almost i almost picked will <laughs> see, see that oh would have been perfect God. wow what happens also, to be fair, if you picked josh i mean if you picked will i would have picked paris yeah that's true. Because I was yeah. second pick, and she was yeah. first on my I'm list. Just kidding, I wasn't gonna pick Will, but uh, he was—he was cute early on. <laughs> Not so much now. Yeah. yeah. Was, uh, I, I, I agree with uh, Melissa. I couldn't stand him throughout this entire thing. Even when he come out, you know, when they introduced the jury and he's coming out, like he would have got the least applause, I guarantee you, out of anybody. But the fact that he's like, you know, throwing his hands up in the air, like, you know, come on, like he's basically uh, like, applaud for me. That's basically what he's doing. And it's really, really tiring. I'm sorry. He just grates on me so much. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, a couple more things I want to discuss here before we wrap up. Um, obviously, uh, for me, um, the uh, some of these answers are going to have to wait until, like, de definitive answers are going to have to wait until I have more time to think and we can talk to the jury and meaning at Johnny, Ali, and Liv uh, and some other people about uh, their games. But I want to know how the season ranks in terms of Big Brother Canada, how this winner ranks in terms of Big Brother Canada. Uh, we'll start with the season. Where do you, now that we know the ending... Where do you fit this into the uh, the rankings for Big Brother Canada seasons? Melissa, we'll start with you. Mm. I feel like that's hard because are we talking about like our versions of the seasons? Like what we saw and what we got to enjoy? Or are we talking about like just if we were to just go and watch the edited season? I think we I have to... Like I think we I have, have to incorporate. I think we have to incorporate everything. The entire experience that we had of the season, um, it, you know, the feeds are part of the season, but the episodes are also part of the season. So if the feeds were awesome and the episodes suck, then uh, you know, average that out. You know, however you uh, want to decide. I feel like this is one of the top seasons for me, for sure. I mean, I feel like it's between um, two and five and six uh, for my favorite, and so I don't. I don't know. I. It's it's really hard because it's also like recency bias. We just saw it. I'm right. very hyped on it. So I, I'm inclined to be like number one. But at the same time, I really enjoyed those other seasons as I was watching it. So I don't I, I know it's near the top. I just don't know exactly where. I mean, I feel like it's one of the better seasons, but I also enjoy, you know, I basically it's two, three, five, and six for me. I, I'm a, I'm a three lover. I love three. I, I love the winner of three, and I also love the season of three. It it just the things that people have problems with with season three just did not bother me as much. And I I felt like I lived and died every week on season three. And I, I, I honestly, I did. I can see honestly, why. Yeah. And, and, and this season, not so much because uh, the problem was we had too many good guys. And so I feel like that's part of the problem. The narrative for me is like, there wasn't really a bad guy. Even, I mean, at times I was sort of looking at Johnny that way, but I really liked Johnny at times too. So there was nobody who I really, really wanted to, I, I never wanted to see somebody get theirs. You know what I mean? So I feel like that we were lacking the, the lack of a villain this season, 
probably hurts it a little bit. I would probably rank it fourth out of six, but it's a high four. I mean, it's not like it's a bad season for me. It's so funny because your whole reason about why you don't like it so much is why I love it. Because I love it when you don't know who to root for and yeah. you're like, you like them all. And like one week you want one person gone and then you're like, wait, no, I don't want them to leave. And then, you know, it just changes every single week. I love that. Um, so it's funny that that's why you don't like it as much. It's actually, it's, 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 it's just really to be clear. It, I don't, I, it's not that I don't like it. I, I do. I do. It, I love it. But it's more of like, I appreciate it. I respect it. It was fun. But there was never a moment where I was like, Yes, yes. And if Caleb won, I probably would feel a little bit differently about it. But as it is, it's a little bit more like Diet Coke rather than regular Coke. <laughs> you, you, you sparked something in me, Brent. I literally listened to a podcast today where uh, they were discussing um, the differences in in cultures and how like people view themselves and how stories are uh, an extension of uh, how we view ourselves and how we view culture and how you we view like who people should be. And they talked about in like the difference between Western, uh, tip the typical Western culture story is much, usually it's, you, you have very clear good guys, very clear bad guys. Um, and that's how like the Western stories go. Whereas the Eastern culture stories are typically a little more ambiguous and everybody's a little bit right. Everybody's a little bit wrong. You're not entirely sure. You're not entirely left to, um, root for any one particular person. Um, right. and I, I think that's, that's, uh, that's kind of what we're talking about here. And I think that's really interesting. Um, and yeah, I think because, it's perfectly, perfectly valid to like uh, one over the other. Yeah, because I mean, like, you know, season three, like I lived and died with that season, like I said, because I was rooting for Sarah and Britt and I absolutely hated Zach and, uh, you know, the diapers basically is, is I just I, I mean, I, I didn't hate them personally, but I was rooting against them hard. And Zach just drove me crazy. And then later on, Bruno took that place. Bruno was really pissing me off down down the uh, uh, stretch of that season. So, you know, I had somebody else to even root against, too. Uh, it was like a double villain at times in some ways. Um, season five, obviously, Ike and Dimitri were like the king and queen of the season. And Kevin Martin was the bane of my existence. I told Kevin when I podcasted with him that, you know, the only reason I was rooting against him is because he stood in the way of my favorites. Same thing with the Pax Brothers on season four. You know what? I didn't really dislike them it's just but they were constantly screwing up at the things for my favorites in terms of cassandra and tim who i was rooting for so any anytime i feel like you have you know great villains along with great heroes it makes for a really compelling story and i do feel like that that's was lacking this season because of the fact that they had so many super fans on the season and when you have so many super fans on a season they know to stay out of the drama and when you when they stay when people stay out of the drama then I feel like it leads to a little bit more of an ambiguous season. But see, that, that's where I disagree with you. I think that the super fans were involved in the drama more than the people who weren't fans. Like Derek, Derek kept himself out of drama way more than any of the super fans. Uh, you know, it was it was the people like, like just kind of his way and Ryan yeah. and, and and Johnny that uh, that got into all of these huge fights. Um, you know what I mean? I, Veronica was like the one person who wasn't a super fan that got into a bunch of fights, and that's I think because Veronica is kind of a unique character. Yeah, um, I feel like they need think, more Veronicas, honestly. It, but I, I don't. But but here's the thing: I don't think Veronica, knowing the game, is able to prevent herself from getting involved in drama. I think that the Veronica who is a super fan is the same Veronica, just maybe a little more effective in the game. So maybe it's the casting. Then maybe exactly. they they cast them. They cast more betas, and they needed more alphas. I, yes. I don't know how. To, I don't know how to quantify that. Then, but uh, yeah, they. I, I'll just say this: you know, I, I still think that uh, Kirsten got done wrong at the beginning of the season. The whole gate crashers thing, freaking terrible. I'm still mad at them about it. But I love Veronica on the season. She was serving it to me, and I was living for it. Even at times when I hated her and I wanted to see her get it, uh, she was giving it to me. And I feel like they would have benefited from having a little bit more of people like her. So maybe Mikey needed to be on the season as well. I don't know. But uh, ma less Marins, more Veronica's. Uh, well, I, you're not, you, you might be alone on that one, uh, in terms of Marin. I know Marin is very popular. Uh, uh but, he's a sweet guy, but he doesn't make good television. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just look, uh, I'd marry him, like but I don't want to see him on my TV. <laughs> Uh, um uh personally i think uh it's it's kind of hard for me to rate the season i loved five um i loved two um two more in terms of the show 
five was just exciting because uh like i i got to watch a friend of mine win the, the show which was very exciting um right. but but in terms of like objectively rating it i'd probably say i preferred uh six to five so i think i would go season two season six season five um in that in that order uh in terms of ranking the seasons just because i i loved the season i thought the feeds were amazing mm-hmm. i love that there was no clear villain i loved that i didn't know who to root for some of the time i loved that there were three pillars of strategy constantly putting themselves in check uh forcing errors upon each other um i thought that was very fun um uh but i want to get to this next question which is how does the winner rank in this in the uh the big brother canada ranks and rankings where does paris fall in the big brother canada winner echelon here um brent <laughs> go ahead brent Oh boy, I'd probably rank her third. I'm gonna guess I, she would probably be ahead of the Pax brothers. And oh, I don't know though. I mean, like I, I guess I'm penalizing Jillian because of the fact of the miscast vote thing, like that she really wasn't supposed to win that it's season. A fair criticism. Um, so uh, so I'm gonna knock her down a peg. I'd probably rank her ahead of Jillian and the Pax brothers. I'm trying to see if there's anybody else I'd rank her ahead of. I wouldn't rank her ahead of Kevin, and I wouldn't rank her ahead of. Um. Wow. Yeah. John. John Party. Yeah. I know. I'm trying and Sarah. And I don't think I'd rank her ahead of Sarah Hanlon either because I think Sarah's social game was was probably better. Um. I'd, I'd rank her fourth again. So I'd rank her. I rank the season fourth, and I'd rank Paris fourth. There you go, Melissa. What do you think? I mean, I'd probably rank her third, maybe. Um. I think I would put uh <laughs> John and Kevin above her. Yeah, I was I, I had a a, a plural moment where I was thinking on live television and it wasn't fun. <laughs> <laughs> um I I think I would put her second. Um I think that uh I ranked season second, put her second. Um after John Party. Um I think that uh, if, I mean, first of all, it's just it's still very difficult for me to place Kevin in the right spot uh because I honestly feel like the more seasons they do where the end game is winnable, the more I value his game because the more mm-hmm. repeatable it is. Uh, if that ever stops, then he doesn't have the skills necessarily to adapt to that. So he's very he has a very focused game, and that if if his that if that focus is continue uh, if that focus continues to be able to be successful, then uh, he's potentially one of the best winners ever because he's never losing if you give him that opportunity. Um, but if that focus ever shifts, then uh, he no longer can win all the time. So then he like falls way down. So very hard to rank Kevin. Uh, I need more seasons uh, until I can like, really properly put him uh, where he might deserve. So he, he would move all over the place. So I think uh, John Party first uh, and then Paris second. Um, I think that John ultimately played a little more cl- uh, clean game. Uh, he played a, a game that was, uh, you know, he actually managed to succeed in a lot of his plans, whereas Paris failed in a lot of her plans. Um, but Paris was a lot better at surviving than I think John was. I think that John relied on competitions a little bit more than Paris did. Uh, he relied on being saved uh, by a twist more than Paris did. Um, and so uh, that uh, really catches Paris up in terms of their, that thing. I think that they're pretty close ultimately, but I think that Paris is second. Um, and uh, and people know my my feelings about the rest of the winners. Um, so, uh, Moving on. Yes. <laughs> um, do we have have any more questions because uh, I've run out uh, of questions. Uh, Stephanie wants to know if the six winners were the final six in a season together, who would win? That's an interesting question. Uh, obviously a very difficult question to answer. Um, I mean, Kevin probably wins his way there and wins, to be honest. Uh, yeah. That's if, uh, as, if if we're playing a, a season like like the one we just watched, the, he, he could have won all these competitions. So um, that's probably what happens there. Um, uh, any Anything else that you guys want to talk about? Uh, no. I mean, it was just a great, ep- great episode, great season. Obviously, the last 30 minutes was a little bit of a snooze, but uh, everything about it I really enjoyed. I was stunned about the results, but it's always fun when you're surprised. I was able to remain in my coffin until 8 p.m. and just got up to watch... Uh, this episode, so I had no idea what happened. I did see, though, because I wasn't looking at comments, but I saw when I said, you know, Kayla's won, 
I didn't see a lot of likes on my comments. I was like, hmm, <laughs> maybe something's up here. So that was a little bit of a clue. And then the fact that they showed Paris with that moment when she was praying, I thought, uh, I thought it, it, it sold it to me that Paris probably had a good chance here. Yeah, I knew that I wasn't winning with Kayla when I wasn't getting like nearly enough like tweet notifications because I feel <laughs> like I would have gotten a lot more had I won. People being like, finally. But uh, yeah, so I was started to suspect that, but I stayed off social media, stayed off Twitter, but I felt like I was going to have to avoid more than I did. So yeah, I already knew. There's a, a tweet from June Song uh, here. Uh, Congrats to Paris for showing everyone what floating looks like. I just hope that one day she understands this tweet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't understand how everyone thinks that they're they they're so desperate to not be a floater that they don't understand that that's a legit strategy if you do it right like at paris was a great floater but she was so convinced she wasn't there you go uh julie in the chat says do you guys know how thankful we are that you have filled our lives with big brother content every day well you now um, you know Thanks to the entire RHAP family, uh, and uh, I will, I will, uh, I will say that as well. Thank you to you guys for always being here, uh, hanging out with me, talking about stuff. Thank you to all of the people uh, who helped me update you guys on the feeds all season long, and thank you to the audience for hanging around uh, and checking us out and consuming all of this delicious content. Um, and of course, thank you to Rob for uh, starting it all. Yes, yeah, exactly. Seriously. Great time this season. Thank you guys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Brent very distracted. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just looking at my phone to see how my Brent's video like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Cool. <laughs> well, yeah. I said everything I need to Thanks, say. Everyone. I'm on to the next thing. Uh, <laughs> on to BB20. <laughs> Honestly, I was looking I was looking at the date to see like when uh, Big Brother 20 starts, honestly. Uh, Melissa Bo wants to know what will Taryn do uh, tomorrow morning? Uh, nothing to update. I'm going to be on Twitch tomorrow morning. That's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, <laughs> hanging out on Twitch. Um, I, I was talking to uh, Matt Hoffman earlier today, talking about getting some secret Hitler back together. So uh, check out the Twitch. I want to uh, play. Uh, all right. Yes, we'll get Melissa involved. It'll be great. Nice. Um, Felipe wants to know: Are we going to do some rankings in the off season? Uh, I think so. I think we'll we'll get at least uh, one in. Um, we've got some Survivor to talk about because I need to brag about that draft. Um, <laughs> <we've> got... <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe I'll win that one. Uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, we have um, uh, hopefully going to be doing some uh, some long form interviews with some of these people. Um, I will be interviewing the final three uh, of Big Brother Canada Six tomorrow afternoon, so keep an eye out for that when it comes out. Um, hopefully, sometime in the late afternoon, I will be talking with Paris. Kayla and Derek, uh, getting their thoughts on what went down. Um, and then, uh, you know, I, I want to get Johnny on a podcast as soon as possible to get him to talk about his game. That was the one thing we were missing when we went over the season in the last three days. Um, I want to get, uh, I mean, I'd love to get Erica, but she still hasn't responded to me. Um, I she would... hasn't responded to me either. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, what's up with that? Um, what the heck? <laughs> did, she do, did, did she do other shows? Erica? I think so. I think so. Uh, has she? Okay, I don't know. Well. I haven't seen her on any show, other shows, but who knows? Okay. Um, yeah, oh, by the way, oh, the moment when Erica reenacted her. Oh, that was great. Moment, that was very funny. And she was so in sync there. I mean, that was perfectly done. Yeah, I was so. like, wait, where's the sound coming from? Exactly. I was like, that's that was that was some hot stuff there, Mama. That I was like, great. I for it. Another idea for an off-season podcast is um, Big Brother Dictionary, where we, we talked about this with, uh, oh, yeah. I think it was Mike and maybe and Rob, or I don't know who we talked about it, but picking uh, or just defining all the big brother terms that I feel like have completely lost their meaning at this point. Uh, yes. And also, uh, I think we should be, ca I think that we need to cast a, uh, big brother, amazing race season, um, with all the rumors out there. Uh, it's not going to be an all big brother cast, uh, on the actual season of the upcoming amazing race crossover event. But, uh, I think it would be fun to get together and talk about, uh, if we were to cast an all big brother season of amazing race, who would our picks be? Because I'm going to assume they're going to be drastically different than, uh, the, the pairs we're going to see oh, yeah. on the, uh, the actual show. Um, <laughs> Um, so that'll be fun as well. Lots of lots of great off-season content headed your way. Uh, I'd love to talk to some more of the uh, players from Big Brother Canada 6 as well. I think we need to do a season retrospective with both Kayla and Paris, if, uh, if yeah. possible. Um, awesome. uh, great, 
great final two. We need to get their perspectives on their own games. I think that will be a lot of fun. So make sure you stay tuned to all of this stuff. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the Reality TV Rehap Ups feed, uh, where you can get this podcast and many others like my Ninja versus Ninja coverage, Brent's uh, RuPaul's Drag Race coverage, uh, the Terran Show. I recently spoke to Mike Vacanti, the trainer, uh, and uh, he talked about uh, fitness and stuff. It was a lot of fun. Um, uh, I, I really recommend checking that one out if you have any interest in uh, in hearing what a uh, very accomplished trainer has to say about uh, being. Yeah, I'll uh, pass on that one. Run. <laughs> <laughs> there's also <laughs> interesting stuff. Joke. It was a joke about my fitness. It was a, a story <laughs> saying myself. Come on. Yeah, come on. Uh, well, it, it's a fun one. So make sure you check that out on The Terran Show. Uh, of course, um, yeah, just make sure you tune into to everything going on. Do we have a hashtag for this podcast? Uh, I'm seeing hashtag you were all babies. Uh, I like that one um, because you guys are babies. Uh, um, scream queens. <laughs> baby scream queens. Yeah, uh, yeah. I like that one. Hashtag really don't it. pick ma- Melissa. Don't no. pick me, Melissa. Yeah. No one wants me. me to pick them in their draft. Hashtag big baby. Hashtag parasmatized. Uh, hashtag uh, Melissa in a veil. Um, I like hashtag scream queens. Yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah, I agree. Scream queens. Yeah, um, BB scream queens. Yeah, that's it's perfect because they were uh, they were queens uh, and they and were they definitely screams. screaming. <laughs> Look, uh, guys, I I am a huge uh, hardcore music fan. I love screaming. I'm just into it. Um, <laughs> so, this is what I want. Yes, it's so passionate and emotional. <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, make sure you uh, follow us on Twitter. I'm at Armstrong Taren. Brent is at uh, it's uh, one lucky gay, not it's lucky gay. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> Melissa is at uh, it's Melissa, not one Melissa. Uh, it's Melissa with three A's is how you follow Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> on Twitter. Make sure you check out my Twitch channel. It's Taryn Armstrong on Twitch. Make sure you check out the RHAP Twitch channel as well. We're going to be uh, doing some content on there, hopefully in the near future. You can check out the video of me watching the episode, uh, the, the finale. Um, there are a couple moments that uh, are, are pretty fun when I have some shocked faces on and stuff like that. Um, and you can see how wrong I was about reading the, uh, the when they put the keys in the box. I was like, well, that's a vote for Kayla. That's a vote for Kayla. <laughs> So wrong. Uh, so, uh, We're all so wrong. Lots of fun stuff to check out there. Uh, for Brent and Melissa, I am Taryn Armstrong. Hashtag BB Scream Queens. <laughs> Almost got that wrong. <laughs> BB Scream Queens. Thank you all. I love you all. I love Big Brother Canada 6. Thank you so much for the great coverage, for the great season, for the great audience ship. We'll see you next time.